It's almost got a sort of Roman feel to it, you know? Up the uh, steps of knowledge. The hell of the time drink telescope. Whose vision and leadership made it a reality. There you have it. I even fit in the field. That's the telescope. Parked, pointing straight upwards. And it's an absolutely colossal mount. So it's mounted at both ends. Yeah? So that's the axis there that points to not the North Pole or the the axis of the Earth's rotation. And ah, that's the main scope. Wow, that's a beast. It's got this funny truss design, very open, uh, with these eight legs on each side, such that when it sags, because uh, it's mounted in the centre of gravity this side, sags the same as that side. So you can make the telescopes comparatively much lighter. This is on the other side of the visitor's gallery. So uh, what are they working on? Well, oh, that's, a, that's those... a good question. So, uh, <laughs> um, well, 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 where are they? I mean, I can't even see them. Yeah, I don't either. So I, I... Oh, so, yeah, you can tell he's using some liquid nitrogen up there. Yeah, he's, um, he's, But we would send somebody up. And then you see the ladder here, way to the left of where he is. Yeah. You can go up that way and that ladder there. get in on onto the top of the dome. And you tie on up there and yeah. sort of get, safety get, get harness get is required. And we actually keep the shovels already up there, um, <laughs> not exposed to the elements because then they get covered in snow. Yeah. But then they'll go on top of the dome and shovel as far down that curve as they're comfortable. There's an actual ladder yeah. on the outside. And then typically also if it's if we're getting if we're getting some sun, we'll turn the dome so that the, the, the doors shutters don't warm yeah, up. Are are actually getting some sun and, and getting some melting. Oh, out. okay, yeah. Okay. Got it. Uh, so this is the mirror cage. Uh, okay, let's see what So what we have our cooling fans, so even though the mirror is made out of Pyrex, still if there's a big temperature change, we won't be able to want to blow air on it to help yes. get it to the proper temperature. But all of the devices that you see here, these are the mirror supports. These are the ones that I described as having over a thousand parts. Yeah. And 33 degrees of freedom in terms of how they move. Now one of the things that I think quite interesting is when they did the final polish of the mirror. So they actually polished here on site, put it back in the telescope and they'd star test it yeah. and then pull it back out and adjust a little bit. So as they were finishing that and finishing the work on the mirror supports, they decided it needed a little bit extra oomph. Uh -huh. and so they installed some of these. Oh, little tension gauges for There's like spring scales, like fish scales, not to to measure the tension, oh, but to go. add a little extra touch. pressure. Yeah, yeah. So that's the Here, final. Adjustment. And on the other side as well. And how much pressure do they put on? That's a few ounces. Yeah. So, are you afraid of heights? Not really. Good. So hey, you outside. should. Yeah. Sure. Okay. It's also kind of bright out. Ah, yeah, this is, this, this is more the, ah, the car. Ah, the bright, the light. So, come this way a little bit if you can. No, <laughs> from me. That's the optic nerve going around on the... Uh... So that's the dome for the 18-inch Schmidt. That was the first one here on site. They started using that, that in 1936. That, and that was a sort of prototype For the 48-inch Schmidt, which is over there. 
And that's the thing that does the whole sky cervix, yeah? Yeah. That's, that's the white, wide angle guy. Right. And so it was here that Pluto got demoted because it was the dwarf, <laughs> dwarf planet Eris was discovered there. And I, I, I came from Flagstaff where it was discovered. Yeah. <laughs> well, I went to college in Flagstaff, so yeah, I know all about how. Uh, what, what, what is the laser yeah. coming out again? So the laser comes out the hole right here in, in the old Coudé room. Uh -huh. So the beam comes out to here, and it's at this place on what we call the, the laser trolley that we have a computer and some optics here under the lens paper there. That directs the beam upward. There's a, another sensor there and it actually goes right up to the top and then over to prime focus itself. Uh -huh. where we have what's called the laser launch telescope which broadens the beam a little bit and then sends it Skyward. about 90 kilometers up on the sky. Yes. And this is all so that this bit doesn't move, but this bit does. Yeah. So the, and it's the, all dynamically controlled. Absolutely. And it's one of the reasons why during the night, if it's a laser night, that we have to take precautions because Let's shoot down you planes. have steering elements <laughs> here. And if something misaligns, you don't necessarily know where the beam's going to be. Oh, and it's that and, powerful and it's a laser, it's is it? It's an eight watt laser. Oh, that would and, cut holes in things. Uh, well, if you're right next to it, so there's there's a shot of it, and then, oh boy, that's really dark from yeah. the outside. I mean, I have that. Okay, from the outside, that's how that looks. Yeah. So we have to take precautions here, but we also have to take aircraft avoidance. And it's right through this path that the laser passes through that we use for adaptive optics. That's why it's locked out so that you can't accidentally shoot the laser yeah. into the dome without people knowing. Oh yes, oh well, yourself. <laughs> and we'll put this to to put the tube in place so the beam is actually confined. Yep. Um, but once in a great while, staff can put an eyepiece here and actually yeah. look through the 200-inch telescope. That's so right. Two years ago at Christmas... Is that, that an eyepiece you have in there? Oh, no, it's just a... Well, a quarter inch yeah, this is a, an eyepiece That's here. A, wow. Yeah. So, uh, or might we actually be standing in the presence of something that Hubble would have looked through? Well, I guess that's possible. I, I do know that on dedication... It's a guide, night, it's a guide eyepiece, yeah? Yeah. In 1948, there's a picture of Hale's widow, Evelina Hale, looking through the telescope, standing right here, looking through this very thing. Wow. And earlier, when we looked at the Russell Porter drawings, I'll just direct you down here. Oh, this is oh. the this is that phantom telescope I mentioned downstairs, where oh, this yeah. represents the telescope and that represents the dome and the dome shutter. You see, we have a lot of Fantastic. really Thank you. old wiring. Yes, and probably live as well, yeah. <laughs> ah, and then this is just the tracking motor for the telescope. And some of Your, the original... That, that, that's what drives the scope? Yeah. This is the one twelfth horsepower motor that drives the telescope every night. The, that drives the 530-ton telescope, yeah. That's funny impression. And uh, only a little bit of oil leaking out. Yeah. But we have a few places where we have consoles like this one, which represent the old level of of controls. Yes. So from here you could, you notice this says computer. <laughs> um, this is analog computer system of gears, not what anyone today looks well, at. Yes. But, but for right ascension and declination, um, just actually being able to control the telescope from here, these are the readouts for the hour angle of the telescope and the time. And, and the you have declamation and right ascension. Something more sophisticated, but still. <laughs> it's still pretty old. Right. So we're getting, this is the exact position now of the telescope in right ascension and declination. Of course, right ascension is changing because we're pointed straight up, but the Earth is turning. Yep. And the local sidereal time, universal time, the hour angle, which is zero because we're straight up, and how much air we're looking through, one atmosphere. And then okay. some other things about focus and where the dome is pointed and that we're closed Amazing. and all of that. But perfectly functional. Yeah. And yes, there's there's really no need to. Tell. <laughs> it does the job, you know. I mean, what else do you want? Exactly. Exactly. 
So this is the one section of me that sort of feels like it belongs in a submarine or... Yeah. I think it's that reminds me of a parasite. Very, very much so. Yeah. I want to be able to shoot torpedoes from that. 